Um, and so I'll go around the room and ask uh, members to introduce. So starting with Mr. Martinez. George Martinez. Kevin Cross. Karen Brona. Christopher Coxton. Hannah Brown. And then on the phone we have uh, Mr. Myers and Mr. Solt. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Solt. Yes, Mr. Solt here. Okay. And is there anyone else on the phone? Okay. And then we also have in the room, uh, we have our legislative liaison, uh, Claire Ross. We have, um, uh, representing the administration, uh, legislative liaison, Mia Cancelo. And then we have uh, Assembly Council, and then we have uh, one person in the room, a uh, member of the public, and a uh, clerk. <laughs> okay, and with that, um, so we have no unfinished business, um, so I'm going to move us on to new business. And then I'll just say generally, um, you know, this committee, committee has existed uh, certainly prior to my joining this body, um, but we're looking to really um, reconstitute and um, rethink the role of this committee and really how this committee can help the assembly as a whole, the municipality, be effective in communicating our legislative priorities. Because as we found um, at, on multiple topics, um, you know, there's things that are uh, beyond the city's, I guess, control or um, purview that, that we uh, would like to communicate, you know, how we can partner with other entities, whether it's uh, state or federal government, uh, making sure that we're being good advocates for the city, all, all of those things. And so with that, um, we'll go to the committee scope. And so if you take a look at the document that's provided with the agenda, um, on the, it's a two-page document. So on the front page, um, I've listed out um, basically our current uh, description uh, for this committee, and then a proposed uh, description, both the clean version, and then you can see just where the markup was, uh, pretty substantial markup. But, um, but essentially, I think the, the current description um, really focuses on the municipality's six-year capital budget and um, and the asks to the state legislature. You know, and so that is certainly one of the functions that we want to continue with this group um, and with the assembly and the municipality as a whole. Um, but beyond that, there's also you know as, as we've discussed, there's lots of policy issues um, in play. There's certainly bills that affect the municipality, and then generally there's a desire I think to. Um, make sure that we're being strategic and focused in how we approach other government bodies that we're representing, um, you know, some clear priorities on behalf of the city, making sure that we're being consistent there. And then also really wanting to um, help the individual assembly members be good advocates for your districts or for priorities that you guys have individually. And so, um, so I want to broaden the scope of that committee. Uh, or this committee, sorry, um, to really encompass those things, again, knowing that we have a lot of work to do as a city, you know, at the city level, but that we can be more effective as a group and individually if we're um, informed and, and tracking those things. So, um, so with that, I'll, I'll pause and see um, as folks have a chance to read the description, see if you have any questions or uh, amendments or changes. We don't have to go through a formal amendment process, but I want to make sure that we're, um, as a group, uh, that this description is reflecting what we want to do at this committee. Well, paragraph, I think, uh, or 
help us to insulate programs have um, suggested themselves the set in duties. And that's really uh, a big component of the station. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking where we can add that. It looks like I would suggest after the third line, it talks about uh, recommendations for the municipalities, six-year capital program and budget priorities, and maybe comma as well as statute changes or potential statute changes. you were pointing out first another place to put statute changes could be in the sentence beginning uh, the committee also serves as a forum for review and deliberation of statute changes so I think we'll, we'll figure out where it can go but we'll capture that that, that comment from Mr. Gates and Mr. Constant and then also uh, referencing the um, not only the um, uh, sorry, can you remind me? Yeah, sure. At the end of the first sentence, it's just adding another phrase to the assembly and the administration. Okay. And what that would do is it provides guidance to the assembly and the administration. All the other stuff that the bill is. Okay, thank So, may work with individual members on communication of district priorities and engaging with other levels of government. That's like the committee's work, right? Any member can participate. And so, I don't know what that means exactly. Yeah, that's a fair point. And so, I can um, share my thinking and then also ask um, Claire to weigh in as well. So, so we talked about. Um, and we were actually just, uh, before the meeting, started talking about our 2023 legislative program and how it ended up being very long, right? So um, because it included kind of high-level things like the port that everybody said, yes, this is a priority, and then district-level priorities, which are also um, important. So And so I think um, this wording may not be the best way to go, but my thought with this committee was to um, provide a space for um, for folks to bring up bills that maybe don't rise to the level of the assembly, you know, taking action on them or supporting them, but, but talking through them. And then also uh, really helping folks um, think about, you know, 
for example, you know, do we create one pagers for every district? Um, you know, that, that maybe the committee isn't saying is the assembly's priorities, but helping work through what is the best um, method for the for that. So the idea is to provide space for um, for talking about those kind of you know how, how what would be the best approach to approach the legislators um, having opportunity to speak with our lobbyists, perhaps if they're at a future meeting, things like that. And Claire, maybe you can share a few your thoughts on this. Not too much beyond what you said. I, I think um, as staff, we can only support a handful of items effectively, but I think there's a lot individual members can do right with their individual house, house representatives and senators, and we could support you in that. Um, and so I think it'd be nice to have some coordination of, okay, these district priorities, of course they're priorities for everyone on the assembly, but um, only, um, only the east side members are going to talk about these east side ones and, and just kind of have a little bit of coordination to make sure that the ball doesn't get dropped but that the right people are talking about the right issues just chewing on this that sounds like a staff function not a committee function anyhow it's fine for now i just want to chew on that some more yeah, thank you, Mr. Thompson. And so maybe changing the phrase, and they work with individual members, because I think the idea is the, the committee would be a space for that to happen. Um, but I'm not suggesting, for example, the committee members are drafting those. Or Right, and so maybe it's stop it with the period, and then it's individual members may work with the committee on communication of district level priorities. Just like turning of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make sense to me. And I think that, that would be within the intent of what this is trying to do. I know it's just linguistics, but it's just I'm trying to get what it says. Thanks. Okay, any other comments on the description? Okay. Um, so we will um, go ahead and update that. As I said, we'll, we'll make the language changes, but they're um, in the, the intent that we discussed. Um, and I made notes here. Um, and then we'll make sure that that gets updated um, uh, and, and circulated. Um, so then our next item of business is the uh, reviewing the committee work plan. And so if we turn to the back, um, this is, uh, I suppose, not a, a detailed work plan. Maybe that's not quite the right word. but. Um, but the first part of the document here, the, or this page, really describes the kinds of things um, that I would see this committee doing, um, and also not, not exclusively this committee, but really facilitating um, these pieces happening. So you can see, you know, preparing those funding priorities, preparing legislative priorities, um, but also uh, to the extent possible, you know, monitoring uh, legislative bills during the session, um, being the forum to provide um, guidance, you know, working with assembly leadership to our lobbyists. So, um, so these are the, the kind of things that I think some of them go beyond what this committee has done in the past, but just wanted to write them down to start to think about, um, you know, how, how members want to use this committee. And then uh, to Member Martinez's point, the meeting schedule, um, so Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but the legislative committee typically would meet I think maybe once or a few times a year, in usually the fall or December, is that right? Late in the year. Okay. Yeah, and, and the purpose was really to work through the annual legislative program, which is what we have from last year. And so what I'm proposing is not to make this a monthly committee meeting, because we already have a lot, um, but, to, um, <coughs> but to slightly expand or, or um, uh, deepen our, our work. So uh, spending time working through this legislative priorities and discussing what that looks like in the fall um, with the goal, I think, of actually finishing it before December, if possible. And then um, during session scheduling, uh, you know, one hour maximum monthly meetings to provide um, legislative updates, for, again, you know, provide that space to talk about bills, to talk about the budget, um, confer with our lobbyists, that kind of thing. Um, go ahead, Mr. Chancellor. Thanks. Under the list of activities, I think two of them we have to be careful with. Um, the term prepare funding and policy priorities to communicate to state or federal government. The committee probably shouldn't be communicating the priorities to the federal and state governments, right? The committee should probably be 
presenting the recommendations to the assembly to adopt to send forward, right? And so um, I just want us to be really clear, and I, you could define the word prepare in a number of ways. So I want us to be cautious in that it's not prepare for a submittal, it's prepare to send to the assembly for adoption. So it's like prepare and propose and propose. Anyhow, so just we have to be careful. The committee doesn't have the authority to speak on behalf of the assembly. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Constant. That's a good point. And I think um, maybe the, a better word there is drafting or to, to kind of have the space to work through. But again, the purpose is to um, make recommendations through the assembly and have the space to do that. Perfect. Thanks. Mr. Gates, did you have a hand up? Oh, oh. I would agree with Mr. Constant. And uh, it really is something I was going to mention. This comment, you really want to look at. Um, Make recommendations for changes to the code section pertaining to the county and our municipal code section 21075 state legislative program. The way it's structured is the assembly adopts the legislative program and then the mayor prescribed duties are to implement and the state legislative program is approved by the assembly. And so you may be wanting to make some adjustments to the code section and recommending them to the full body. Um, I also, I guess, while I have the mic, if I could, you mentioned the scheduling. Uh, in that section, it says that the assembly shall adopt the legislative program by the 7th uh, of each year. And so uh, we're scheduled to have a um, early December to finalize those legislative priorities as a common meeting. Uh, I guess finalizing recommendations to the assembly. The assembly's uh, early December meeting is. December 5th, so it's coming. You want to meet for the week before that, at least. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Gates. And actually, while we're on this topic, I think um, I know we'll talk about the legislative priorities program development, like what that process is, but I think in terms of timing, um, and this is a discussion we were having before the meeting, kind of thinking about what is. Um, I guess, what, what is our deadline for that? I know we could work backwards and figure out the frequency of this committee's meeting um, between now and then. And so then uh, maybe I'll ask uh, Claire to speak to kind of how things worked last year and then also asking um, uh, Mia to weigh in from the administration's perspective if you guys have thoughts about that timing. Last year we were a little late in organizing. This committee met, I think in late October, early November and submitted it was pretty much a brainstorm and each member submitted ideas and we came up with a list of priorities for the assembly and then we put that into a memo and sent it to Mr. Wilbanks who's organizing the legislative program for the administration side. Um, and then it took them a while to do the formatting of the program and it became a very minute, a last minute rush because they weren't able to give a draft to the assembly until the like right before it was due and I think we might have even had to have this, we're contemplating having a special meeting just for that um, because the mayor had a legislative luncheon at the Denina schedule for mid-December and they wanted this done and printed by then. Um, but they simply wanted to see it before it got printed um, and approve it. And so it was it was pretty rushed. So I think it'd be nice if we could work together to move all of those things up in a couple weeks. Before we go, Neil, I'm sure. Um, okay. yeah. Thanks, Dean. Could you read that code section one more time? Can you read that code section? Uh, section 210075. Yeah. Would you read it one? Well, not just would you read the code section? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, you want me to read out the whole section? Or at least the part germane to the timelines and how it's supposed to work. True, sorry. Um, let me get that back up on my screen. Um, so it's um, two subsections, so about the timelines, subsection A. Uh, with recommendations from the mayor and assembly members, the assembly by December 10th of the preceding year shall adopt a state legislative program for submission to the Alaska State Legislature of the Governor. The state legislative program should be introduced prior to adoption of the general government capital budget capital program. Is, uh, the Wait, session, should be introduced when? One more time. Um, prior to adoption of the uh, general government capital budget and capital program. Thanks. So the reason I asked them to read that, you know, just a little predicate to the whole conversation. <clears throat> For two years, 
the administration has effectively drafted it and attempted to what I would suggest box out the assembly from being able to participate. Where the locus of the code provides the authority is the assembly, not the administration. And we've been very generous with the administration, attempting to say we are happy to work with you, but they ignore, don't show up to meetings, and this is past. Where they have this whole thing, and at the last minute, there's no more time. They hand us the package and say, there's no time. You have to accept our priorities. And that has led to a number of dynamics that don't serve the municipality well, the people of Anchorage. And so our theory of inviting you here to this committee early is to demonstrate we operate in good faith and to ask the same so that when we do get to the point where we have um, priorities finally being adopted, they're priorities that the assembly can get behind. Right, that we jointly created them. And so there's been some heavy leaning onto, oh, separation of powers, and then taking our power, right? So you can't have it both ways, right? And so what we would prefer is a working relationship as opposed to an oppositional one. And in this context, if it is oppositional, the power is with the assembly. So let's work together. That's my preamble to the new dynamic. Yeah. Oh, if I may, and, uh, related to the separation of powers issues you raised, subsection B, that code section, that sort of describes and that division of labor, mayor, and uh, that's when we see we cannot uh, get to this commonly as just one of the activities be uh, reviewing code section and making many changes. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have any comments on that. Um, well, first of all, I really appreciate being here. And um, the last time I was here, I didn't get a chance to say that I'm really excited to be in this role. And um, I have, um, you know, uh, relationships with some of, some of you and would like to meet more of you um, as time goes on. I agree wholeheartedly. We should um, be working together uh, on, you know, on what's important for the city. and. Going down to Juno with um, a very clear direction of what you know will benefit the city of Anchorage because the mayor works for the city, you work for the city, and it's you know everyone working together on that behalf in that regard. Um, I did want to mention today that I talked to Wendy Chamberlain before I came here, and she mentioned um, that she's not able to be here today because a dear family friend lost their child recently, and so she's helping the family out. But she said that she'd be very interested in participating in the future meetings. Um, as far as the timing of the document, I mean, certainly, from what I heard just now, um, you know, what's ideal is that everybody um, is involved, has the opportunity to review before anything um, becomes public. And so, you know, I, I would recommend that we work on it as soon as possible with the idea that we um, get it done, you know, sooner than we did before. Um, and have that ready so everybody knows what's in it and you know, we have that those conversations leading up to that. So appreciate your comments, um, Assemblyman Constant, and I'm you know I'm here to work on behalf of the city and make it as smooth as possible. Yeah, thank you. Um, so in terms of timing then, I was just looking back. So December 5th is our uh, the first meeting in December. And then prior to that, our meet our uh, prior uh, regular meeting is November twenty first. Um, so, so what we can do is aim. Uh, well, and certainly we would need to introduce at least one meeting prior to that. Go ahead, Mr. So, I don't think that timeline works, though, Dean. Dean, I don't think our December fifth timeline works because what you just said, I believe you read that the. Legislative program should be adopted prior to the adoption of the budget. Oh, introduce, is that what you said? Yeah. Um, well, it, the legislative program is to be introduced prior to adoption. Okay. The legislature can adopt the legislative program after it's supposed to be introduced prior to the budget adoption. Right. And, uh, and so the budget yes. has to be introduced or finalized before 30 days, before the end of the year, right? Yeah, uh, 21 days for the budget. Oh, it's 21. December 11th, I think. Okay, then that's the first time December 11th. Okay, just wanted to make sure our timelines work out. Yeah. 
And I guess I would just note that uh, historically, I don't think that same tent dates is more soft than I am about how I at least the missed um, I want to count, but we have the time. Not this year. <laughs> wait, wait. That's correct. <laughs> the December 10th deadline has been missed for the budget? No. Oh. For adoption of the state program. Okay, yeah. So sometimes it's adopted in January. Right, so, but our budget, we've, at least for the last several years, finished it in November. And so if the item has to be introduced, and December 5th is the date we're looking at, then we have to be working well in advance to have something prepared before that last meeting of the budget. And um, this comment could make a recommendation to change that date in code, you know, the next month or two prior to this year's time on. Thank you. Yeah, and so um, I guess I'll suggest um, Maybe our, our aspirational deadline should be to be adopting the legislative program at the November 21st meeting, which is where I believe, unless there's some staff food, that would also be where we're adopting our, our city budget, um, annual budget, and um, and then just knowing that if necessary, it could push to um, December 5th, but that, that to Member Constance's point, we do need to um, push our, our actual production timeline earlier. And so I think this will help us inform the committee meetings, and so I don't want to go through the exercise of picking dates right now, but um, just to say, I think this does suggest that we'll, um, we'll want to front load more of that work. Um, there will be work during committee meetings, obviously. There will be asks to the rest of the committees and to the rest of the body, um, and, and perhaps that's something we can work with assembly leadership if there's also a work session, or if we use this committee and invite everybody to it, however we want to do that. Um, right, go ahead, Member Martinez. Thank you. And uh, just one comment back to uh, 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 I was going to say the first name, but that staff member Costello. Um, when, when Chamberlain was here doing the presentation, one of the things that stood out to me was the, uh, their, their understanding of the, of the power of unity and the, and, and the, and the timing of unity, so that the earlier the city has its priorities identified. Uh, back to uh, Member Constance's point, with respect to the, the prior division or struggles over um, who's at the table and what's leaving that table. Uh, according to Chamberlain, the sooner and the earlier we are clear, the easier it is for our caucus to mobilize around our, our priorities in Juno. So I just wanted to read, just to read, read uh, just to encourage that, because that was also the recommendation. This is the disposition of our chair. I appreciate your, 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 both your comments today, but also your experience with the legislature to understand how to really come alongside us in this process. And uh, just to reinforce that, that was the recommendation from our uh, operator down in Juneau, and, uh, and I think that will really help us have, recognizing that we're not always going to see eye to eye on those priorities, but the earlier we can iron through, the stronger we have a case of a unified front to be made. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. And that actually, if we look at the fourth bullet of the activities, the relationships and caucus, um, it would be wise then to contemplate something we haven't done before is get it done early and then have a meeting with the caucus before they head to Juno, right, in that December time frame. And uh, we may not get everybody, we may not get many, but maybe we'll find some leaders who will pick up and carry the ball with us early and often. And so I think there's an opportunity in the calendar to do our best to have a joint meeting with the leadership or the body of the Anchorage Caucus in January, or excuse me, in December, or whatever. Yeah, thank you, that's a great point. And I think in the context of the um, our work plan, I will make some, some updates and then recirculate it, um, reflecting that, because I think that is definitely the goal. And of course, this is not um, a state election year, and so I mention that only because I know, um, you know, we'll know who's in office, right? Um, which will not be true in 2024 until early November, and then uh, also that we'll be able to get, I think, more of their attention in the interim, so that's helpful. Um, so with that, let's move on, because I do, 
I know there's, um, we're, we're touching on a lot of the other topics that I want to get to today. And so um, next I want to go to takeaways from our uh, briefing, which was a week ago. And so thank you, Member Martinez, for starting off that discussion. Um, and then I'll also invite um, members to give your, your takeaways from that or thoughts. Um, and then also um, uh, Ms. Kassel, had talked about um, your thoughts as well. And so I want to invite you to do that. Um, but I'll start with members. Do other members have comments? And I appreciate Member Martinez flagging that united front. I think that is really important. Go ahead, sure. sure, I'll start. And um, it's takeaways from July 27th, but I would suggest, and I don't know how this is going to work, that we also do our best to um, loop in Lankarome, which is our DC lobby firm. And I'm in discussions with them, but um, in the context of doing regular briefings with our lobbyists, we should at least at some points along the timeline prepare meetings with them as well. Yes, thank you. That's a good point. That's something I'm interested in as well. Mm -hmm. Cross, you had a comment? Or? No, I was just thinking. Okay. It almost thought out loud. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, heard, we heard the wheels <laughs> Uh, the other item that um, that Chamberlain mentioned was limiting the scope of the prioritization so that the, the clarity of our priorities, uh, I think she described, you know, like uh, the, because of the port, that was a, such a focal point, it really showed a lot of organizational power behind that. But it was, uh, you know, don't go with the biggest wish list ever and kind of have a, a set of priorities. And I think through the, the process of working through the committee with, the, with, the, with uh, the administration, we'll be able to understand that really clearly. Just flagging that less is more often when we have, when we're trying to round up a unified front. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, I think part of the issue last year was that everyone was trying to be supportive of each other. So anyone who had something, it went in here, and then we never had time to take the next level of prioritization. So um, I just really remember when he's saying two issues yeah. tops yeah. for the top, and then I'm picturing kind of maybe a second tier of, of things that she said, you know, if it comes up in conversation, it's nice to have some other things to take advantage of. And then I'm not sure what you really want to do with your district priorities. I, th I think those were nice, although, I'm not sure if many members had influence on the district priorities, if there's other things that you would want to add. Um, I think we can format it in a way to really make it clear. These are our top two, here's second tier things that then individuals, either staff or members can work on, but maybe not the lobbyists. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'll add too, there's, um, I know the constraints are often with the, the budget asks, right, the funding asks, um, but I think, um, we can also contemplate kind of what is our short list of maybe, you know, bills to pass or, you know, depending on what those look like as well, uh, some of which may also have funding components. Um, but but it, but I think to the point, we don't want to make our list too long. Um, and I also want to invite um, uh, Nancy to share, because I know you, you have the unique position of having legislative experience on the other side. Um, and so maybe you can comment just your experience as a legislator and what you find to be more effective or less effective when folks came and advocated to you. Absolutely. So again, appreciate you know the opportunity to weigh in on this, and appreciate the comments you made. I wholeheartedly agree with uh, what Wendy uh, recommended, and I guess my only addition to that is that if if you are not prioritizing what you want, the legislature will. And so, with all of the competing demands and the lack of resources. Um, you, you essentially defer that judgment call to the legislature, who does their best to do that, but you're most familiar with your area, and you know, you know the needs of the city, and so it's very powerful when the assembly and the mayor come down and they have the same, they're singing off the same sheet of music. What is not ideal is when you have different individuals advocating for different um, items and so it makes it harder for an individual legislative office or even the Anchorage caucus to know if you have limited time to communicate 
or to weigh in with the co-chairs of finance and the decisions are being made, which item do you push for? Because you know you can you can push so much, but it usually has to be just one one item or two. And so, as hard as it is to, you know, we've all heard it in writing. You know, get rid of words, make it as succinct as possible, and that's pretty much how it works there too. I do have to say, however, that when it comes to legislation, there might be more opportunities there because um, all the bills go to different committees and we can be looking at you know perhaps some innovative ways when you mentioned it to perhaps incentivize investment in certain issues that are important to the city perhaps um, you know behavioral health items or other things like that that you know uh, that will benefit the city so like you said um, Chair Rowley, it's not all the money but that's an important part but there's also the legislation which is important so Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Member Martinez. A great point um, that you just raised about um, just making sure we have a, a, a limited scope. I think that's really important. But you also raised this idea of categories in my mind, right? So when we think of the legislative program, I'm thinking of the difference between items that may be priorities for the delegation with respect to advocacy, which is a little different in my mind than legislative items or even taking advantage of an educational option. Uh, I don't want to see the power of setting the agenda by not setting an agenda and just having kind of the suite of stuff. But I just think of like an issue that in my mind that, that resonates here of a distinction in how we organize this is a question, which is like uh, the student-based funding formula. I think that the, the delegation, uh, by and large, the, the city, there's a unified, well, generally a strong voice to say, you know, this is something that's going to impact our city at this level. But that seems to be a little different than specific legislative priorities that we need in the city with respect to operations, uh, funding, uh, development, and some other, other aspects. And there's overlap, obviously, but there's an advocacy voice, educational voice, and then the legislative, both in terms of the bills and the budgets, items. And if there's overlap, that's great too, but it seems like there could be categories that we want to just think through as we prioritize where work lives and what we are articulating, but also the outcomes that we want. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and I wonder, um, uh, Mr. Constant, I know um, th this is also, I think, in the category of, um, you know, there's there's work done or there's been positions taken in the past. And can you remind me, I believe there was an assembly resolution supporting passage of a of the base student allocation. Is that right? That took place in the last year or so? Yeah, yeah and also we do one every year for the um, defined benefit program. And uh, there are a number of them. So, this is at the floor. I'll just say that I don't know that I necessarily agree that we should narrow our list down to just a tiny handful of items. I do appreciate the approach of prioritizing them within the document, that these are our mega priorities, if you will, and these are our just workaday priorities, and then these are member priorities. Yeah. And in that way, having a document that encapsulates the breadth of that, I think it will be more fulsome and it will provide Wendy the narrow focus she needs because we don't need the lobbyists we're paying to work on all 25 items. What we need is every legislator to have the opportunity to understand where Anchorage is at. Then an individual member can champion the project in their district or in what it makes sense to them. Or So I think there are a number of ways to look at the final product, but I would like us to not hew to this idea that our, our final adopted program should have only one or two items because we do speak by resolution on a number of items, and when those pass, those are our priorities. Go ahead, Mr. Park. Yeah, thinking about it, I kind of agree with Constance. Um, you know, it's either the very precision sniper approach or it's kind of a shotgun approach, but I think if you were to ask for a multitude, but then you were to prioritize those and say, these are the ones that are in line with the assembly rules that we've established our priorities over the year. And so these are helping continue. These are ones that are, that you know, may have some overlap of why they're important to different districts. Because I think when it comes before our representatives, they're gonna have a different view. They're gonna have a different opinion of what things that they feel are important for the community and what goes into it. 
And so providing them more options because they um, might get you more likely, you might, uh, you know, to get uh, more funding, you know, like again, like a shotgun approach. So uh, again, I would, I would support what Constance set forth as, a, as, a, as an example. Yeah, and I'll comment on the answer too. So, um, I think, yeah, I think it's not an either or. I think the prioritization does need to be very clear. And again, you know, where we're directing our, our lobbyist resources, for example. Um, but that is a great point that I know, you know, legislators in particular are looking at their district, right? They are looking statewide, and, and hopefully we can encourage looking community wide too, which means the municipality and the communities within it. Um, but that I do think, yeah, it is important. And that's why I want to make space. I don't want to. Um, I want to avoid what we did last year, right, is, is to have that long list with no priorities, but then also to give individual members that opportunity and that empowerment to speak to your own district's priorities, because I think that is really important. And not to be the gatekeeper and say, oh, this isn't this isn't a citywide priority, so it's not important, but to make, make a place for that. I'll go ahead, Mr. Martinez. Yes, thank you, for, and thank you for just articulating that it's not either or. I don't see it as that way as, as well. But I'm going to go back to, uh, because it seems like we're having a conversation around the way we organize this information. And, and I'll go back to the buckets that I just identified, and perhaps we're thinking of those as values, rather. And so if we think about what is the purpose of this document, of the program, what are the values that we want to have, we need targeted outcomes now, this year, in the, in, in the, in the legislature, this is the, these are the priority target outcomes, so an action item, right? But I describe advocacy and education as well. So, it, you know, we have a suite of information that we can order in a way where there are action items, these are our other priorities, and et cetera. But that really is about advocacy and education on the other information that we provide in the, in the legislative packet that keeps the wheels rolling on our priorities that may not be the action items of this year, so they continue to have that education and advocacy role, but organizing the document in that way so that we can at least have the clarity of our priorities, playing a role of educating members of the legislator with information that they don't necessarily have to have actions on today, but a clarity of the actions that we need to take in this, this session, I think is really important. Yeah, go ahead, Claire, and then you. When I'm urging prioritization and limiting, it's more that each item needs a champion, so and someone who's going to work on it throughout the session. So a number of items in here that got put in here were fairly vague, and then they got put in here, and then no one did anything else with them. And um, and so that's what I want to avoid is because then it's clutter in this document and then no one brings up with the legislature so they never hear about it again. Um, and so, and, they, and the champion doesn't always need to be Wendy or Anna, it could be anyone, and it could even be staff. Uh, one thing that was really helpful for us was the election statute. The, um, I'm not sure where it originated, if it was in the commission, I think with the commission. Election elections committee. At the, com at the elections and ethics committee, they, with input from the, Commission. The election commission had one piece, ethics and elections okay. committee had another piece, and we okay. Yeah, so it really bubbled up from the community and from the people who know the issues, and then they passed. They submitted to the they passed it, and then they submitted to the assembly to pass a resolution on what they wanted for the elections reform, and that was so handy because we had your voice and uh, myself and the clerk and elections team, I don't even know if we had members very involved in that. We were able to work that through. Now hopefully um, the election bills that are working their way through the legislature contain all the angry wish, wish lists and we were able to do that without requiring members. We could do it as staff because we had your order very directly written on paper. So I think another thing that's really helpful for us as staff is if you have um, clear directions to pass resolutions on it now uh, so that we have documentation that we can use in our work. We don't like to just pull up, we think the assembly wants this. If we can copy and paste from what you've already approved, that's very helpful for us. Yeah, thank you. And just to say, too, that's that's certainly an open invitation to all the committees, you know, as there's priorities that come up and um, things to, they don't, they don't always have to run through this committee, but that would really can help streamline that work. Um, go ahead. Thank you. So this is a really interesting discussion. I appreciate it. So we're talking about takeaways from Wendy's presentation. And so when she goes to the offices, she 
has a limited amount of time, and she will be talking about, you know, when I was there, it was the port. So the other items that I would say fall at a lower, you know, priority or, or more individualized for the districts, those are all run through the finance committees. And so the finance committee co-chairs are working with their members who are working with the rest of the members, and that's where those items percolate into the, the budget. So um, just in response, you know, to Assemblyman Constant, you, you can have those other projects by district. I think that would be valuable. And you're going to have individual legislators who, have, who are very motivated to get a particular project in their district for, for all of Anchorage, but they're the ones you know, fighting for that particular item. So I don't necessarily see Wendy coming in and saying, well, we would like this for this, you know, this right. is the priority of the right. assembly and the mayor, and, and then she won't get to that level. But, but there's room in the discussion for that. I mean, the legislature spends their entire time working on the budget, the entire session uh, is on the budget. So we have more opportunities than just you know, that high level Right, now, if I might, yeah. I, I think there's some wisdom in thinking in the tiering, if you will, the top line priorities, the kind of the other overall priorities, and then the individual priorities, however we break them out by district or not. The top level ones are the ones we want to dedicate our lobbying resources to, yeah. right? And so, in some way, identifying that, mm -hmm. maybe not in the documents themselves, that's how we solve that problem, right? It's Wendy's opportunity. They've said these are the two. The mayor and the assembly agree, so I'm carrying these. And then when she's in John Smith's office and she's read the whole package and John's talking about something else to to her relating to what he's got going on, she's like, oh, look at this. It's just an opportunity to have everything in one place crisply. And that gives us some boundaries, if you will, on when we are contemplating passing an additional resolution that says this is an assembly priority for our legislative program because we have to balance the resources available with our aspirations and what we think mm -hmm. we can achieve. And so I think this is a really good framework for achieving success. Yeah, thank you. And then um, also sort of the, the point that you brought up about kind of who to talk to, I think that's also one thing I'd like to um, you know, make space to, to educate our members um, as well. Like kind of what, when is the best time to speak to somebody, you know, like like what are those avenues? Uh, understanding the committee process because it is fundamentally different than ours, um, and so those, you know, we don't need to spend all of our time doing um, legislative trainings. But but I think that's that's the kind of discussions we can have, especially during the session, and, and kind of helping people think in those terms. Well, um, you know, interestingly, that when I think about the work that you're doing, Claire, we have the document. We also have a table that details out some more specifics that may not be in the document, right? Not in the document itself, but a spreadsheet. These are as we develop the plan over the time. And there's another column that Wendy found herself lacking at the end of the last sessions. Who can I call for this item when I need help, right? And so there's even some internal documentation we could create that would help generate internal resources available for her when she's there doing her work because I spent a lot of time with her in the last week of the session, and I'm happy to do that, but it was ad hoc because she couldn't get the people she was really aiming for. And so if we break down who are the advocates for this project or that project in a place mm -hmm. that she can have on a back-end document, then we probably get her even more empowered. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I know, Claire, that speaks to your point about the champion. You know, like if, we're, if there is something that we're saying is a priority, to make sure that folks know um, to pick that up. As it comes up. Um, so I know we've, um, we're have we scheduled for 12.30s, and I know we've got some items, but I think this is good discussion. Um, my, my intent was really to just start forming this committee and really getting, getting us moving in that direction. Um, so let's move on to the building relationships with the Anchorage Caucus. So um, part of this is um, just to kind of share a couple of conversations that I know um, I've had and I think Mr. Constant has had. Um, so the Anchorage Caucus, the co-chairs are uh, Representative Donna Mears on the east side, um, and I'm not gonna remember the district numbers, but I'm gonna look them up. And, uh, and then uh, Senator Kaufman on the south side. And so those two are in charge of, um, you know, they don't speak for all of the membership, obviously, but they're functionally the ones to help schedule meetings. Um, you know, they're looking at their own 
I think it, they always do it in the winter, having um, everybody come back home and, and do a, you know, whatever the engagement with constituents is. So they're the folks who are kind of our points of contact there. Um, and again, the, the goal is not to run all of those communications through the committee, um, but I did want to share, um, you know, I've, I've spoken with both of the, the um, caucus co-chairs and talked about the, our intent with this committee and, and broadly with our priorities as a municipality. Um, we have a meeting set up, um, not with, it's, it's more of an informal, um, so we're just going to have, you know, a couple of our members there, but really establishing those relationships and then talking about, uh, for example, I think the idea of having a joint meeting, perhaps, or, or a work session in early December, inviting all the members, um, and then also, you know, we'll have a chance to kind of brainstorm what that can look like, you know, there they're really interested in broadening the scope and the understanding of the Anchorage caucus to not just be all of the legislators who happen to represent Anchorage, but thinking about, you know, how they're representing the community of Anchorage as a whole or the municipality as a whole. Um, uh, so with that, I'll just see if there's other members who have had conversations or if there's things um, that you are thinking about or would like brought up, um, either as topics or kind of thinking about how to engage with folks. So I feel like this is going to fall into the really dumb question. <laughs> so you asked about, Claire, about the CIP lists from different community councils. And then, so this, on this page, the legislative program, district specific funding requests. I would assume that these came from looking at CIP lists. But, you know, just because I know my area, one of these, I'm like, who the heck asked for that? Um, so, um, yeah. Anyway, I just wonder how this came from CIP, or does it not intersect at all? Yeah, Ms. Costello might have more on this, but um, those were all submitted by the administration, and I'm guessing they just got it from their departments because they're all either parks, AWWU, or roads. So I'm, I don't even know if they came from the CIP or if the department, um, the departments also can submit things kind of. Well, I mean, it goes into our CIP anyhow. I think those might have come from the department to the administration to this booklet, and I don't know if you have any history or knowledge of that, but I don't think it include, included a lot of the other things that your communities and you would want. So um, I am not um, up to speed enough to let you know the information on that, but I do, having met with Gary Jones over at Elmore, I think that they do feed in and they're uh, judged and looked at, um, but I can find out for you and let you know. Yeah, I think it would be helpful just to understand, because um, again, it's not to say that, that we have to be the gatekeeper for all of those things, but I think if it goes in the legislative program, we should understand and then also give members an opportunity to weigh in on that and decide what's on the list, what's off the list. So, um, yeah, that'd be helpful for next meeting. And I think, oh, go ahead, Mr. Martinez. Just to follow up on that, um, the, 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 I guess the two on this list are J and K? Yes. Yeah, right. And um, I think we recently heard and that the bar one, for example, these uh, the Russian Jack Park Chalet upgrades, that that's these things are also generated from the departments themselves and their work their work plans independent of community capital improvement projects and they could be on maintenance schedules and work plans that are multiple years out and by the time we're seeing it, you know, this is where it's at. So kind of having some understanding of the nexus it's it's complicated because we've inherited stuff that's been waiting. Uh, we're acting on stuff that we want now, and the community doesn't necessarily know where where things are coming from and where these funds are coming from, uh, particularly or whatnot. So it is a little more complicated, but I just wanted to flag that I, I remember uh, that this project, I think, is coming through uh, a, a departmental um, initiative from multiple years now. Yeah, thanks, that's a good point. And so I think in terms of our process, I think I, two things I identified is um, um, making sure that we have that discussion as part of the, I know we have a work session um, in September on the CIP, because I think there's some questions around process with that, and then 
I know it's been raised, what, what do we recommend as a state project versus a local one? And the trade-off, if we put it on a state request, then we can't you know, include it on a bond, those kind of things. Um, so I think that's that's a topic we should dig into. And then another one is to make sure that in our process that we um, ask all members, maybe maybe each pair of us in each district get together and, and figure out, you know, look at the list from last year, figure out what we would add or change to that list, um, and then just be able to, again, to make sure that all feeds into our discussion so we can have those prior things. Thank you. Thank you. So you just said that we can't put a project on bond if we have a legislative request. What's the source of that prohibition? Uh, sorry, I think I think I wasn't clear. It was something that um, Mayor Salisal brought up in um, uh, I think it was the work session last week, and the the context it wasn't the, that it wasn't either or. It, it just wasn't clear that if we make a state legislative ask, then then does that deprioritize it at the city level, or just because right. it seems like we shouldn't be asking for the same project okay. in both places? That that was just yeah. sorting that out. So that wasn't a code issue or a state law issue. That was simply a being reasonable, right? Because if we're asking for state funds and we fund it in April, then why would the legislature support it? I, I understand. Yeah, and I think I'll flag too, I know as a former community council person, that was always confusing to me, you know, knowing that maybe there's a city road, but that state money can go, you know, just sorting out kind of where where those asks should go. So I think it would benefit the community as well to, to be able to understand, or at least help, you know, we understand so we can help them understand. Go ahead. I don't know how they do it through us anymore, but when I worked at the library, we would often put one part of the project in the state and one part of the bond, and then when the bond passed, we could go back to the state and say, we've met our match, now it's time for you to do your, your match. Um, so I don't know if we take that approach with other projects. That's how Parks does it, too. Yeah, that's a good point. There may be a pro the process that we're just not familiar with, so I think I'm just, I think we flagged that that's part of the discussion with the capital improvement priorities. Um, which I, th I think is why I had put item F, so I'm going to suggest we don't <laughs> belabor that further. Um, but I do want to uh, cover briefly the legislative priorities for, I think we've been talking about that, the item E on our agenda. Um, so I think we, we covered a lot of what we uh, would like to see in that and how we can improve on, on this year's. But I also want to point us to um, the fact that we do have this 2023 legislative priority program. Um, and so, so it, you know, it, it was adopted, um, I guess, in, in December 2022, is that right? So, so for our purposes right now, I think if you are speaking with legislators, um, we do have this. Um, and so we should, I think, consider that the current document, it doesn't mean that we won't make changes to it, but, um, but to the point of engaging early and not waiting until we've updated our next one, I think that's, that's something to think about. And of course, um, you know, you guys are all in conversation or you kind of know what, what your districts in general are, are wanting to see. So, um, so I guess the, the point is just don't, don't hesitate to use this um, in the meantime, because it is a document that we've already adopted. Go ahead. So if a project was making its way through uh, state government and passed and then was vetoed by the governor, do we, do we make sure it's added again? I mean, I know I'm thinking of Tudor Road, Tudor Muldoon traffic calming had six million, and then it got vetoed by the governor. So that should get on the list again. I, I would assume you wouldn't have to ask if they got it that far once to keep it on the list, but sure. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'll I'll bite anybody else. <laughs> To weigh in, um, I think, um, I guess generally, you know, if it, if it hasn't been passed, it should still stay on a priority list. And I don't, I don't know that there's been any discussion about direct engagement with the governor's office, or I don't know if the, the mayor's had that discussion about any any of the, the vetoes. But um, but I think at this point, we don't have a specific plan to engage on that point. Um, and I know the legislature has talked about you know if and whether they get together and override vetoes. Oh, I just philosophically, I think we should look at every year as a clean slate, okay. and any member can say, "Hey, this is still a priority." It was vetoed, and I probably would grant it um, precedent and a step in easier. But I think 
rather than doing a kind of assumption of next year's program is is last year plus this year. Let's let's just look at it. I, I propose we look at it clean every year. And again, those those are easy projects because they should still be in our CIB or CIP. That's what would be my hope is annually we begin the process. And that could be an early summer meeting, like, well, now we know those projects were veto. Do we plug them in? Do we have an alternative? What happened? And I think we have an example because here we have this list of all the projects that are still ongoing, right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't really change. Other, other thoughts on the legislative program, either um, questions or comments on what we have before us of 2023, or other thoughts as we as we start to design kind of our process. Okay, I'm not seeing any, um, but I think this is really good. Um, I know it's always hard to, to start, it feels like starting a committee from scratch a little bit, but um, but I think we're getting some good direction and really phrasing um, good issues, and um, I think we'll we'll be able to sketch out a path forward for future meetings. Um, so with that, um, I think I, again we talked about um, capital improvement priority development. That's something we can bring up at that work session because I think that that's an important part and understand how that works. Um, we talked about committee meeting schedules, so I think we'll we're proposing meeting more regularly than I had written down originally, um, with the goal of getting things done earlier and then really aiming to pass our legislative program in November, and then if necessary, it can slip to December, but to uh, move toward that goal. Um, so lastly, um, I wanted to just flag um, number five standing updates. So this is one, I don't have updates beyond what we've already heard at the work session, but I wanted to include these in our, um, in our agendas to make space for folks to share either um, updates on federal issues, um, updates on state issues, and then uh, district and member priorities. That's where it would be, you know, for example, hey, I really want to bring up this priority or this is a huge issue for my district. Um, so I'll just run down the list briefly and just see if there's any updates on federal legislation policy. Go ahead, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. So CJ at Blank Rome, who's the, one of the primary partners there, and I met on the phone, they did an analysis of the HUD continuum of care formula, and they replied that the continuum of care formula is not established in law. It's an administrative process, mm. which is good. However, when the region director was here, as I mentioned before, she kind of rebutted the argument that we are not receiving a fair amount with a number of factors. She said, you get other money that are available to you. She also said, you aren't spending the money you do have efficiently. You haven't spent it all. And so we had a conversation about, okay, send me that list of funds that you've identified that we haven't spent, and um, I will make sure the assembly bears down on those efficiency issues and help us find new money while we are working on adjusting that formula. The problem with the formula, it's much the same as the, the student base rate under the, the state funding for um, the school district, I forget the name that the state uses for that a rate. Student it's not the BSA, it's the, no, it's, the, it's the foundation formula, which is the BSA is factored by the, the foundation formula. And we are currently one, number one, meaning everyone else is one point something and they get one point something times whatever the base student allocation is, and we get one, and that's based on where it's most cost effective to provide education. And um, it's been at least seven to 10 years by which education is not cheapest here in Anchorage, it's actually more cost effective in the Matsu Valley. And so our students are losing $7 million a year in support that they should have that's going to other places because of the way that formula is calculated. But the problem is it's a pie, it's a limited pool of money. And if the formula is opened, you get Anchorage legislators fighting the rest of the state's legislators. And so there's no chance in hell that's ever gonna change without a lawsuit. And um, much the same problem exists with the FUD continuum care 
funding formula. It's a limited pool of money, and if they give us more money, they take money from somewhere else. When they open that process, they begin making enemies. They're hesitant to open that process. Anyhow, all of that to say is we did have a good month in the conversation. We have much more understanding of the nature of the problem and a commitment by the department to work with us on it. Um, and so that's where that federal legislation process is at this time. Okay, thank you. And that's exactly the kind of update we can provide um, in the space, too. I mean, we're not being action by the committee, but um, hopefully we keep folks informed. Um, and, okay, do you have an uh, update as well? Oh, oh, are you going through a list of state issues next? Yeah, oh, I'll just wait for that. Okay, um, yeah, any other federal updates? Okay, great, uh, state yeah. updates, um, yeah, so go ahead. Thank you, so I just wanted to mention that, you know, the governor did veto House Bill 8, which was the uh, electronic bikes bill, which is in his veto message, he mentioned that he wanted to uh, leave up to the communities the ability to regulate e-bikes and so that is something that the assembly might want to look at because it's very popular and I think there's a need for that. If, if I might Mr. Gates, Dean, um, we had a discussion at the last meeting that we don't have the authority to regulate electronic bikes because they're currently regulated as motor vehicles and that's a power that's not granted us under the state law and so um, the veto message might be in conflict with the law. Uh, as a follow-up question, so would it be possible then that we look at uh, what state changes might be needed so that the assembly then would have that authority and it might be something simpler than the um, legislation that went through? I think that I think that Mr. Gates probably have an opinion in alignment with that, that we can address, we can analyze where we're not authorized to act and then ask for that power. It's the e-bikes. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really have a comment right now, but I need to do a deep dive. We get that piece of legislation at the we can have, I don't know, what point. We can have for this legislation that we can get from legal about um, electric bikes who classify as motor vehicles and state statutes and can be regulated differently than motor vehicles. So um, it may really be changed. But I would have to do more of an analysis so that's a good project to put on the project list somewhere for legislation and investigation. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And I'll just state, um, I know that there is an ordinance currently before the assembly, the AO 2023-65, um, and just to state that does not specifically regulate e-bikes. And so, um, so not to say that, that that can't be taken up, but it's not. Um, in that current legislation, just in case there's any confusion. Okay, uh, any other state updates? Okay, um, well again, it's just an open invitation to uh, to members, um, and I guess we'll, we'll move into the district and member priorities, um, but just to say if there is an item that you're aware of or would like um, input on our discussion, uh, please feel free to bring those up, um, even if it's a question. Um, I think those are all valid. Um, so I'll see if there's any other district and member priorities uh, to bring up at this time. So I already threw it out there to the little bit of traffic coming. Thanks, so I'm tracking a project that seems to be coming through the tip, maybe not the stip, Trying to figure it out. Um, it's a port project. Colloquially, they talk about an access road to the port, which runs through Track J, which we'll have a conversation about on Tuesday. Not the road, the track. And the issue that is becoming apparent is that there's another major project for the port and the rail, where they're going to realign the rail access to the port and the truck access to the port. And what that might take is two or three years of completely diverting port traffic. And if they do that, they're going to run day and night right within 20 feet of residential homes, a highway full of 18-wheel trucks. 
and they're staged the project in such a way that no one would really know that's what their plan is, but when you see them in the big picture context with several projects aligning, that's what they're doing. And so I don't have an action yet, but I want to raise the concern of the neighbors because it may be the only answer, but I sure as hell hope it's not the only answer because those folks don't deserve to have a highway driving through their front yard. Mr. Cross. That sounds like a project that the new transportation committee could take up. It sounds to me like, I mean, we recognize that they're kind of in a bottleneck there and their options are limited. I don't know what that looks like as far as some agreement to the military or how we can, or, or if we can, through a resolution, ask for sound detonating measures or something. I guess we, we should definitely look into that and see how we can take and mitigate that impact on, on that community. Yeah, I and mean, it's hard to imagine 18 wheelers by the thousands running in front of your house out of nowhere for an undetermined amount of time. Low geared, going up and up and home, like screaming all hours of the day, right? Anyhow, it's, it's an emerging concern. Yeah, thank you. And that's another good example of how we can use this committee. You know, it's, it could be just routing it to a different committee or or kind of troubleshooting how, if and how we should deal with it. Um, okay, um, well, I'm not hearing or seeing any other uh, member priorities at this time, but again, uh, we will be reaching out and, and making sure that we can um, feed those into, um, you know, as we work through this legislative program, um, citywide priorities as well as these district level priorities. Um, and then uh, other than that, I am um, also open to uh, feedback about our, our schedule. Um, I'm still working out kind of what our agenda is going to look like, um, but if there's things that I'm missing, please let me know. Uh, Mr. Martinez. Yeah, just one item, uh, just to take a step back and say, and on last uh, the CEDC committee meeting, we heard um, uh, a little bit about, as we're talking about the state items on dilapidated properties and, and that sort of that sort of trajectory and then even some of the redevelopment stuff with respect to tax abatements and the zones. So just tracking that that is a body of legislative work that we are we need to track through our other committee, but I wanted to flag it for our for this committee. Yeah, thank you. That's, thank you. That's a good point. And that's for something I could imagine, for example, during session, maybe you know, as a I know that bill's pretty far along in its process, but as things like that are moving, um, they could be raised here and say, hey, you know, make sure that we're talking about this or we heard there's a big development uh, versus talking in depth about the content, which I think is what you're saying would go through that other committee. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so I'll see if there's any other um, business. I know basically number six, legislative and budget priorities, that is what the bulk of this work will be, <laughs> um, but that is something that goes on every committee agenda. Um, and not seeing any comments on that, then we'll move on to audience participation. Um, so anybody in the audience who would like to make a comment. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody jump up. Um, so with that, um, unless there's any other business, we will be adjourned. Okay, um, go ahead and adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. This is what Oh my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> Have you seen those trees? Uh, They're million, million dollar homes yes, yes. backed up to a bar. Backed up to a bar. What? Yeah. Who lives there? Um, it's not urgent. Yes. No, it's not. Oh, no, no, no. no. And I was, I just, well, there's the other project that's close to where you are. I think on our bus. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The bus project is just the water, the train. Oh, Regal Mountain. Yeah. 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 So I think you are Replacing sewage. Yes. That's a priority. Yeah.